Nice work, young blood. Thank you, Mr. Lodell. Yeah, your daddy taught you right. <laughs> you know, when all the construction starts coming back, you got skills to make something of yourself. Thank you, sir. Oh, it's fine. I, I can wait till payday. I'm sorry. All the others have families to feed. But you do good work. I like what you do. Okay? Got a funny way of telling me that. Did not tell you I could pull some strings. Yes, you did. Yes, you did, Tyler. Thank you very much. Good man. Yeah. But tell me why. Morning. Why would a doctor want to hire a carpenter? Cause it ain't nothing but scud work anyway. You ain't gonna like it. See, the pay was twelve dollars a week. Yeah. Liking it all right. All right then. Dr. Blaylock, this is Vivian Thomas. Vivian? That's a girl's name. Yes, my mother was so sure she was having a girl, she picked the name early and kept it. You don't say. I'm pleased to meet you, sir. Call me Doctor, and Francis, you can tell this good doctor that his theories are extremely interesting, and I'll be praying for him. Yes, Doctor. Though it's his patience I should be praying for. Keep up, son. Yes, Doctor. This is where my work is done. What is your work? Medical research. We push the limits of surgery using stray dogs we get from the local dog catcher. They're darling, but don't get too attached. They're a means to a great end. The dog pens get cleaned out twice a day. Need the lab swept every morning. Simple tasks, but they prove beyond the abilities of your predecessors. Now, do you think you can handle it? Everyone's gonna see how smart you are now. I don't know how smart you have to be to shovel up, but the guy I'm working for, he seemed kind of eccentric, but he, he's a doctor, yeah? That's right, he is a doctor. So you just keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. We can get married now. Yeah. Do everything just like we laid it out? Doctor. And Mrs. Tom. <laughs> <laughs>
Vivian. Well, good morning, sir. You said you were a carpenter? Yes. Did you go to high school? Yes, I did. Got my diploma. Planning on going to Tennessee State next year to study medicine, be a doctor. Unusual ambition for a carpenter. Well, I always wanted to be one since I was a kid. I almost uh, saved up enough money for college and then slow down, hit. Those events like Neil gas manometers over there. So you can handle a saw? Yes, since I was 12. Do tell. Well, uh, cutting the lines my father would measure on the lumber, sir. Call me doctor. So your dad is a carpenter, too. Does he think of your ambition? Oh, he's always known. I had my mind set on it. Those apparatus on the workbench, what do they call? Van Slyke Neil gas manometers, sir. Doctor. They are indeed. And Vanderbilt may be a podunk institution, but I'm going to put it on the medical map. I'm working on traumatic shock. Damn thing kills thousands of people every year. And doctors don't know what the hell to do about it. Let me see those hands. Pick that up. Now the left hand. Good. Excuse me, Vivian. Dr. Blaylock wanted you to have this. Hey. Good night. Good night. doesn't have anything to do with me going out on strike. I said, do you know what my grandfather did? Yes. He picked cotton in Mississippi. You told me a hundred times. My grandfather was a piece of property. No better than that chair table over there. His son became a free man at the age of 15. He raised me with hardly an elementary school education. Now I see my son graduate college and go on to teach school. So don't tell me things don't get better over time. Things don't just get better. People got to change things, Pop. Make them better. And if I don't do something now, I'll be a dead man before I get paid like white teachers do. Vivian, you know I'm right about this. All right now, Harold, just hold your head. I got reading to do. To anesthetize Brutus, first we have to calculate the weight. He weighs 18.4 kilograms, and it should take 552 milligrams of sodium barbitol to anesthetize him for three hours if the absorption rate is uniform. Dogs? What kind of doctor is it? Well, well, you practice on dogs, and then you can help heal people. Gives me the willies. It's not that bad. You look inside, you see all the colors, all the pinks and blues, reds. It's beautiful, Clarence. Where life comes from. What's this? Hey, come on. Hey, open up. Excuse me, sir. What's going on here? Oh, the bank is closed. Closed? 
Yep. Hey, open up! Open up! Open up, Joe! Somebody got to see somebody in there! Hey! Hey, open up! It's 10 o'clock, I got to get to work! Let's go. Look, we'll come back later. Hey, hey. something's wrong, can't be close. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Hello. 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 Keep waving that window. We closed. But I, I, I have my money in there. I, I need to get my money out. I can't get your money back for you. Why not? Tell me why not. Go on home, son. The bank has failed. Oh, sir, that's all my savings. I have my money for school in there. No, Claire, they got my money in there. Sir. Sir, that's my money for college. Your money's gone. Gone? But what are they talking about? They talking about it's gone, Ma. Well, we'll all we'll just have to start over. Can't fight it now, it's done. It just feels so wrong. Took me seven years to save that money. You're not the only one in here who had money in that day. It's done, it's over with. Still got each other, Viv. Yeah, we got each other. That's all poor people ever have is each other. There's no cut down a cannula in the femoral vein. I showed you how to do it. I figured out a way to give it barbital intravenously. Where are you putting it? In the forepaw. The manometer? It's all set up, Doctor. Good. You can begin the incision. I'm not ready for that. If I say you're ready, you're ready. I'll mark out the line, and you cut along it. Just like you did for your old daddy. Like this? Just like that. Keep your hand taut. Why are we making the incision here? To gain access to the pulmonary artery. And how will we find it, Vivian? It's the artery leading to the lungs from the right side of the heart. Not bad. Now the rib spreader. And why are we going to damage poor Brutus's greater vessels? To induce traumatic shock to study it. Watch this manometer. And imagine that Brutus is a 16-year-old boy who just fell out of a tree saving his mom's cat. He's broken four ribs. He's concussed. Dad's rushed him to ER, but he's gone into shock. His blood pressure's way down. His vital signs almost non-existent. Can we save him? Not if I use present methods of treatment, see conventional. Wisdom says I should constrict the vessels. I beg to differ. Let's break their rules. Use my rules. Body needs blood. Let's give it some. How's that gauge? Still falling. Maybe the experts are right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll kill this boy and break his mother's heart. It's rising. That's life coming back. How does that make you feel? Good. Very good, Doctor. Let's look at the record of our work.
Where's the smoked drink? I'm sorry. The smoked drums. You didn't set the smoke drums? What is a smoke drum? That's a smoke drum. What the fuck is wrong with you? I record all the information I need for my research on a smoke drum. I did not know that. Is nobody listening to me? God damn it! I have to do everything myself. A whole day's work goes down the toilet and I have to start all over again. Do you have sawdust or just plain shit for brains? And where in hell do you think you're going? Fine, get out of here. Sorry I lost my temper. Normally it takes assistance months to learn what you picked up in a matter of days. It won't happen again. Please. gentlemen, thank you. I mentioned to General Cunningham the other day how proud we were that Al had chosen us over all the medical schools in the country. John, why don't you tell everyone what you said? Be glad to, Walter. I just got back from a, a month at the front. There are thousands of our boys in field hospitals all over North Africa and Italy who owe their lives to Dr. Blaylock's work in the treatment of shock. I want everyone here to know how grateful we are to him and how proud you all should be. Here, 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 here. Thanks, General. It's great to have you here, Al. But tr truth be told, it's Mary we really want. <laughs> Our new chairman of the Department of Surgery, my old and dear friend, Dr. Alfred Blaylock. Uh, Mary and I welcome you all to our home. As do our dear children. <laughs> Sadie, get into bed now. <laughs> Thank you, Johns Hopkins, for my prodigal return after 15 years in the Tennessee backwards to find myself back here. Dreams do come true. You're the best surgeons in the country, and I'm honored to lead you. To use a timely reference, we'll storm the beaches together, shoulder to shoulder, lay siege to the mysteries of medicine. We'll make the kind of progress Hopkins used to be known for. I know we will accomplish great things together. I'm a 
Hunt him for my next watershed discovery, not to put too modest a point on it. It's not enough for us to be great surgeons. We need to be outstanding researchers. Any ideas? Anything innovative? What about skin grafts? Testing what skin groups might take? Isn't skin merely packaging? No, it keeps out an infection. Excuse me, Dr. Blaylock, may I suggest something? Please do, I'm very suggestible. Tell us your name again. I run the Harriet Lane Dr. Clinic Tarsier. for children. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Dr. Longmire, Dr. Kelvin, Dr. You. Cooley. I've read about your research. A congenitally malformed heart. Yeah. Oh, boy, women in their hearts. Vivian, would you get Dr. Tarsier a drink? What would you like? Oh, champagne would be lovely. Yeah, let's lubricate the vein of inspiration. <laughs> Go on, Dr. Tassi. Tell us more. Well, it's something that up to now has been written off as untreatable, but I don't believe it has to be. I'm speaking of Tetralogy of Fallot. Blue babies. Yes, these children, their hearts mm. aren't failing. They're suffocating due to a blockage in the main artery to the lung. Pulmonary stenosis. The mortality rate is 100%. I've watched hundreds of cyanotic children die. I admitted a baby tonight who will certainly die simply because no one has had the courage to attempt a surgical solution to this. <laughs> well, maybe with good reason. <laughs> to put it mildly, Helen, you can't operate on the heart. That's basic. We don't have clinical proof of that. That is my point exactly. I think it's possible for us to oh, Come on, Denton. You have to stop the heart to perform a complicated correction in less than three minutes, and by that time, they're dead. These children are doomed. There must be a way to get more blood to the lungs. I mean, I doubt we could repair the defect in the heart walls. Without causing ventricular fibrillation. No, but maybe there's a way to avoid interfering with the greater circulation. If we focus on the pulmonary artery. Mm -hmm. Oh, on this God's earth, are you? neighbor upstairs nearly burst through the boards. I'm gonna have to fix that. What are you gonna fix the fat man? Get him to stop hollering his head off when the girls is trying to sleep? Try devil dig. They're real good. Seen better in Nashville. I wanna go home, Viv. Clara, it's our first week. Yeah, and you said we didn't like it, remember? Yes. Our, our family's in Nashville. We had a nice home in a good neighborhood. The schools were fine. Not living in this. I, I don't know how we're gonna make it on that paycheck he's talking about. And he got you serving drinks at his party I mean, just I, to make ends meet. Then come on. I try to understand. When I started at Vanderbilt, I was a janitor. I know. And Dr. Blaylock saw what I could contribute, and he gave me a chance. And when they offered him that big job in Detroit, he didn't take it because they didn't take me. Now I'm a lab assistant to a top surgeon at the number one medical school in the country. And it's a good position. And what about you going to medical school? You don't have to remind me of that, Clara. We have a family now. <sighs> Sweetheart, it's important work. And it's a real opportunity. And, and I love what I'm doing. So it doesn't really matter how I feel then, does it? Clara, you know it matters. See that man? That's Johns Hopkins himself. Sir William Osler, father of modern American medicine. William Halstead, invented a mastectomy. Let me show you some of the others.
Excuse me. All workers punch it at the rear entrance. He's with me. That don't make any difference. Do you know who I am? No, sir. I'm Dr. Blaylock, chief surgical professor. Well, I'm sorry, Dr. Blaylock, but that's the rules. I'll meet you in the labs, Vivian. Hey, you need to punch in first. Hey, girl. See, we've arrived. When was the last time they used this place? Have someone clean it up before they put the equipment in. I'll meet you in an hour at the Harriet Lane wards. Let's see if there's anything in this idea, Dr. Tausig. think I could find someone to help us clean up the lab, Doctor? Who do you think you're talking to? I'm not sure. I'm Vivian Thomas. I work for Dr. Blaylock running his lab. I'm Dr. Edgar V. Hecker, director of laboratories. I'd like some coffee and a donut. Doctor? Doctor? There must be a mix-up. Listen to you, I won't stand for insolence. We'll see about this. You know, Doctor, there aren't many... But you, I'm sorry, you'll have to speak up. I can't hear too well in this ear. You're one of the few women doctors I've seen here. Well, at least they let me in through the front door. Squat like that. A little boy told me that it helps him breathe better. It cuts off the blood to the legs, pushes it up into the lungs. They both look very cyanotic. Here he is now. Dr. Blaylock. Hello. Welcome. Here is the Saxon baby I was uh -huh. telling you about last night. <clears throat> smiles when someone does that. Hello, Mrs. Saxon. What is that thing? It's an oximeter. Reads how much oxygen there is in the blood. She looks cold in there. But I can't hold her. They say it isn't good for her. I'm not even supposed to let her cry. How do you keep a baby from crying, especially if you can't hold her? You can see the change in the shape of the size of the vessels as these hearts grow larger. I did necroscopies on some of my patients' hearts. 
in order to study the malformations in detail. It's amazing they could live at all with hearts like these. Dr. Gross at Harvard said only God could correct a narrowing indentation of the left side of the aortic arch. Perhaps that statement says more about Harvard than it does about God. That baby back there. How long? Six months. A year at the very most. That's not right. Are you going to take this on, Doctor? Helen, I want to see all your diagnostic notes. I'll get them right away. Thank you. Put away the books, Vivian. Let's not waste any more time on theoretical crap. Let's start with experiments. Four separate defects of the heart working in combination. The pulmonary artery is constricted in the main artery before the divide diminishing blood supply to both lungs. And the hole in the septum causes the used blood to flow back into the arterial system Instead of flowing through the lungs, turn in the baby's blue. The baby's heart is delicate. It's a goddamn minefield. The first step is to see if we can create the blue baby condition in a dog and then come up with a plan to solve it. You're drinking too much coffee. Balzac drank 300 cups of coffee in one day. Of course, he died of a perforated ulcer. <laughs> <laughs> the odds are against us reproducing this in the laboratory. Are you sure this is a limb you want to climb out on? Back in 29, when I had TB, the x ray showed a big gaping hole in my left lung. I laid there on a freezing porch in a sanatorium in upstate New York with 18 blankets on me, nothing but my nose exposed to the elements. Death's a very humbling thing to live with day in and day out. I swore then, if I got my life back, I would do something important with it. I know in every fiber of my being that this is a limb I want to climb out on. It's going to be hell trying to work with a child's vessels three or four millimeters thick. Like sewing over cooked spaghetti noodles. We'll need the smallest sutures. We'll need to make our own, too. We could be in for trouble, dear. Big trouble. They're driving me crazy. This goddamn war. I don't have enough doctors. My surgery cases are through the roof. If I'm not operating, I'm teaching. You're going to have to do most of this research. What do you need? Uh, I need a bulldog clamp. Small enough for the baby, but strong enough to stop the flow of blood. What about a breathing device? I'd love a positive pressure respirator, but with this war going on? Yeah, how in hell can I do the experiments if I can't even get the equipment? Oh, shut up. Well, you certainly pissed off Ed Hecker. You mean I disturbed his afternoon nap? What is it with you and that boy of yours, Thomas? Why'd you bring him up here? We've been together more than 12 years. He's a really good worker. <laughs> How about a little wager? $50? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Give him a break, Dick. You're on. There's a rumor going around you're contemplating heart surgery. 
Well, that's an intriguing rumor, don't you think? Wouldn't it be a feather in our cap if we were the first ones to do it? Oh, indeed it would. And I hope you'll forgive my skepticism. There's no reason for us to think it's possible. And every indicator says it can't be done. Most of us agree, Al, the risks are huge. There isn't even any incremental progress. Where you see risks, I see opportunity. Hey, you gotta take care of that sick up in 4B. And I thought you said you're gonna fix these steps. Uh, yes, forgive me, Mr. Green. I've been very busy at work, but I, I, I will get to them. The deal is $7 off for odd jobs every month. You gotta pick up the pace. Some kick to it tonight. The same as last night, but on a different side of the plate. Sometimes it's better the next day. I hope so. Because guess what? Tomorrow's Hash Isle of King. I'm Hash Isle of Queen tonight. Uh -huh. <sighs> I could get a job. Right, baby, and it's been three months, and all I'm closer to is retirement. Things move slow sometimes, no matter what you want. I'm getting close. I've got 30% desaturation. That dog was faintly blue at best. Till we get the dog in the same state as the baby, we can't move forward. What is the problem? Every time I constrict, it kills the dogs. I've tried nylon, ligature, umbilical tape, ox facet. We need a new approach. Okay, uh, forget constriction. Try a partial lobectomy. Remove both lobes of the right lung. Do an arteries to veins fistula where the medial wall of the aorta and the pulmonary artery adhere. I'll be in number one. That's a very good idea, doctor. Thank you. You did the best you could with the condition of his liver. You never had a chance. I always have a chance. Give me his autopsy. Yes, sir. What's that? A new respirator. I was rummaging around the machine shop. It's not pretty, but... It works. Whoa, it is pretty. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. You're the only one I can trust around here. I suspect others relish the thought of seeing me fail. Oh. There's an ambulance in the driveway. Good evening. General Cunningham needed help carting wounded GIs off the ship. So I volunteered to be a driver on the base. 
Oh. Well, that's wonderful. Not really. I got a lot of time on my hands. She wouldn't go to bed. Not until you came home. You know what she said today? She said she wanted to be a patient when she grows up. So she can get to see her daddy. <laughs> I don't remember you wearing a tool belt at the coming out party. <laughs> Guess it has been a couple of weeks since I made it home before 11. No. It's 23 days. Not as if I don't know the lot of a doctor's wife, but I'll miss you. It's gonna change. It's probably gonna get worse. Hey, Vivian. Hey, Dr. Longbox. Dr. Blaylock in? Uh, no, he's not. I, I don't know where he is. You should check his office. That's an interesting procedure. Never seen a clamp like that before. Well, it's a small vascular work. Where'd you get it? I pieced it together from some things lying around. Ah, uh, now we're getting somewhere. Uh-huh. You're not even looking. Hmm. It's like when you come home late at night, you know? You know the feel of the room in the dark. That looks impossible. Oh, no, no. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, you see, uh, this string here, that's how you get traction on the suture, because you need a lot of exposure for the anastomosis there. Mm-hmm. I'd like to work with you sometime. Oh, fine, Dr. Longmire. That'd be fine. My emergency rotation starts in 10 minutes, but I come in on Thursday. Oh, that'd be fine. You have a good day, doctor. in the neighborhood. The Supreme Court finally made it. Mm-hmm. A long time. You've been working on this case for what, nine years? No, no, 12 years. 12 years. Time. So tell me, tell me, what, what was it like? Well, nine white guys in big gowns walked in first. Then the school board lawyer. Our lawyer, Thurgood Marshall, he looked kind of lonely in there. And you know what them people said in their brief? Said since colored teachers in Nashville live so cheaply, they should pay us a whole lot less than white teachers. <laughs> but let me tell you, Thurgood, Thurgood said he'd be goddamned if they could get away with that. So he gets up and says to that white lawyer, you're full of it. <laughs> Have you ever read the Constitution? <laughs> The damn 14th Amendment, the Equal Protection Clause, says a government can't discriminate based on race. Yes, Lord. I mean, he was good, Viv. I think we got the Board of Education on the run. That's good. That's good news, huh? So so when will they decide? Could be months, longer. I don't know, but I can wait after all these years. All those calls I got in the middle of the night, white folk telling me they're going to kill me if I don't drop this lawsuit? No. You got to show them you won't take that kind of thing. <laughs> so listen to me when I tell you you need to leave this sorry-ass place in that dead-end job. Oh, Harold, Dr. Blaylock's doing the best he can for me. Ah, uh, it's not enough. 
He trusts me to carry out those experiments on my own. I'm running the whole lab. Thank you. Would uh, they compensate you extra for that? Oh, now, Harold, Vivian's doing important research now. Uh, but he's forget what granddaddy told us. He said he regretted acting so grateful for being free for what really wasn't, wasn't any freedom, freedom at, all. at all. I know. That's right. I remember. Did you hear that? Thank you. Hey. What you giving him extra for? What's wrong with me? Nothing minding your own business wouldn't cure. You got that white coat. You just a class three work the same as me. In fact, I got two years seniority on you. I'm making more than you. I don't think you some kind of big shot around here. Excuse me, buddy. Class three, what does that mean? It means salary grade. And ma'am, uh, and this here, what's this? Job classification. What is class three? Maintenance worker. I I'm a lab technician, that can't be. Vivian Thomas. Okay. Here we go. Vivian Thomas, class three. Thank you. How's it going? Vessel's tolerating ligation. Any progress? If you kill that dog, I swear I will take it out of your paycheck. Finished up here. That's a long mud. You're not close enough for me, thank you. Oh, come on, Vivian. 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 Vivian, I, I was kidding about taking it out of your paycheck. Well, good luck. Because I only make $16 a week. That's for a 16-hour day. Well, that's all they can pay. Well, that's all they can pay class three workers around right here. What are you talking about? That's my job, classification. Who cares what they call you? You and I both know how valuable the work is that you do. If my work is so important, then why am I class three? Two grades below what I do in classification and pay. I don't know why. I don't pay attention to bureaucratic details. I see. Look, Ed Hopkins, you can't be a technician without a college degree. And where are you going? I need to fix some steps. We have work to do. Do I have your permission to do some work for my landlord so I can pay my rent? Dr. Blaylock, could you come here, please? You're not gonna believe this. Look at the oximeter. The guns are blue, Doctor. Vivian did it. Off, Alfred. Off, Alfred. I brought him up here. I gave him this opportunity. I don't set the pay scale. I just don't see what more I can do. You're probably feeling guilty. Guilty? What the hell do I have to feel guilty about? For not sending him to college. You think I should have sent Vivian to college? Sure, why not? He told me that was his dream. He mentioned it to me once. You know I need him in the lab. I guess there's only so much good one person can do. Congratulations on the doll. The kind of raise you're suggesting, how important is this? He makes it possible for me to be in many places at the same time. Can't you just hire a well-trained college? No, I can't. His hands are important to me. He's good at following my instructions, improving on them, better than anyone I've ever encountered. 
Alex, or you want me to circumvent every administrative regulation on behalf of a colored helper? Walter, I'm close to accomplishing something, and I need him with me so I can continue with my research. Can I count on your help? What, Clara? Dr. Blaylock. Come in, sir. Thank you. Is uh, Vivian at home? Oh, yeah, he's putting the kids down. Viv? You know, in 13 years, Dr. Blaylock, I don't recall you ever stopping by our house. I don't recall ever being invited. Professor, did something happen? Yes, I obtained a raise for you, 25 extra dollars a month on top of what you're already making. It's 300 for the whole year. Will that be sufficient? What job classification? A surgical technician. I got you promoted. Promoted? To what he already does. Excuse me. Now you can pay your rent and put all your focus on our research. Vivian, back there in the lab with punches, what did you do? What you suggested, partial fistula. Stitched the main arteries and veins together end to end in two lobes of the lungs. We created a blue baby's heart in that dog. Did we? Now we have our disease model, we can find a cure. And much as I enjoyed coming here to see you, would you mind terribly if I got you a telephone? Uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, thank you. <laughs> a shot. I'm sorry, Doc, what did you say? We need to create a shunt to get more oxygenated blood to the lungs. Can't see how to do it. Remember back in Vanderbilt when we were doing the research on how to create high blood pressure in the lungs? Yes, I connected the subclavian to the pulmonary artery. He failed to get the high blood pressure, but we did get high blood flow. Which is exactly what Dr. Towsley said these babies need. That's it. We build a bypass. Take an artery and redirect it. Systemic artery to the pulmonary artery and through the lungs. It's a long way around, but it gets you there. If we work from the right side, we have an advantage there, but... But the recurrent nerve is in the way, and if we kink that... Vocal cords parallel. And the carotids here. Well, we may kill the brain if we damage that. Confident thought. The subclavian. Tied on here. After the divide, cut it right under the clavicle. Swing it down. Long, slow, gentle arm. We hold it. We pull it down four inches. If your hands don't get too excited. Thank you for the vote of confidence. No one's ever done anything as hard as this. Changing the course of blood. And turn blue into pink. Death.
retracted. No solution. Can't we try things my way occasionally? Oh, all right. Suit you. Do you mind if I show you something, Doctor? Are you sure you did this, Vivian? This is like something the Lord made. <laughs> Look, uh, Mr. Saxon, Mr. Saxon, I acknowledge that these are uncharted waters. There are risks. But I think we have found a way to repair your daughter's heart. How? You're stationed uh, away in Norfolk, is it, Mrs. Saxon? Yes, sir. Been working on the Spencer, trying to get her back out to sea. You work, you work on engines, right? Yes, sir. Well, I'd be changing around some of the piping leading to and from your daughter's heart. Just, um, just switching around the pipes. Yes. Arteries that bring the blood to and from the heart to the lungs act just like pipes. Uh, I've been successful switching them around. It's that easy? No, it's not that easy. No surgery is, and this operation has special complications, but I still think it's worth doing. Well, um... We're going to talk about this, Doctor. Good idea. It's going to be a lot harder with the baby. We're going to have to collapse one of her lungs. She's already so cyanotic. She's not getting enough oxygen, and we're going to have to take away half of her lung function. You made those new clamps yet? I'm working on it. How did I shred her inside with those clamps? So many ways to fail. Every second counts. A single minute is too long. A single minute of poor blood flow to the brain. A single second of open bleeding. Are you saying I shouldn't allow this doctor to perform a miracle to save my baby? We don't get to demand miracles. Honey, God has his plans. Maybe we just have to accept it. And I was so happy when I was pregnant with Eileen. You know, I haven't had enough time. Why can't God let me get to know her first? I mean, I don't want to go against him. But why can't his plan be to let this doctor save her life? Professor Blaylock, Mrs. Saxon told me you plan to operate on her baby. Have you actually seen this child, Doctor? I check on her every day. And you're still going to proceed? Have you had any success in the lab? Absolutely. I successfully performed a shunt on a dog just two weeks ago. I can't imagine you're going to proceed based on a laboratory success on a dog. How many people have you saved? So what you're telling me is you're performing an experiment, not an operation? My instincts tell me nature made a mistake and I can fix it. Would you like to see what I've been doing, Father? And right now, my instincts tell me perhaps you should come back another day. What? Your quest for glory is vain, arrogant. It takes arrogance to cut someone with a scalpel to save their life. 
I have no doubt. But if you intervene with God's will, violate the purity of an innocent heart, the parents, not you, doctor, will bear the burden of guilt. Perhaps God is, as you say, trying to kill this child. I am not. Yeah. Looks like a train wreck. What happened to you, Pontius? Maybe we should just stop here, Doctor. No. We're using the wrong vessel. What the hell's going on? Mm. 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 Okay, there. Get up, baby. It's okay. It's okay, baby. It's just a nightmare. Oh, my God. Where the hell have you been, Vivian? I had a dream about this white woman last night. Well, perhaps that's something best kept to yourself. No. <laughs> I knew it was Eileen Saxon. She was all grown up. She was sitting there in a the corner. She was knitting. And she let out a baby voice. And she fell over dead. I, I couldn't see it. But I knew the inside she had a baby heart. She just fell over What dead. the hell does that have to do with The stitches didn't grow. When we did the shunt on Pontius, he was 10 pounds. He went up to 20. He pulled it loose. I was wrong. Purse stringing doesn't work. We need a new stitching technique. The tennis on the back wall interrupted on the front wall. That's what we need. And then the shunt will grow. 65% oxygenation. She's deteriorating so rapidly. How will you have time to practice the operation? We can't let up. What about the new stitching technique? I'm trying it out tomorrow. Hey, you have to see this. Vivian Thomas is operating, assisted by the chief of surgery. Pull the end down with the anastomosis. Long, slow, gentle arc. I can't see. Can you see? Could you adjust that lamp? Are the clamps still holding? Yes. No kinking? None. Right, now for the tough part. Continuous sutures on the back wall. Interrupted on the front. We'll be operating. You betcha. <laughs> You'll be ready. Yes. Now that I've seen the master at work. The master of the house. Your daddy should be proud of you. I think he is. Mine was only proud of the fact that I could wiggle my ears. I think he'll be proud when he operate. He's dead. Dead are with us all the time, I believe. Can't separate the past from the future anymore. You can your right arm from your left arm. Ah, but you see, they are separated by this, by the heart. Or connected. Or connected. No, Lee. Tangerine, do not touch. Do not touch the heart. We are going to challenge this ancient doctrinal myth in this hospital. Who wants to attend? 
Dr. Swerdlin, Dr. Fillmore, Dr. Cooley, Dr. Longmire. Thank you. Wow, you're dangling your reputation off a cliff. Calm down, Walter. This isn't Grand Opera. Isn't a doctor's first tenant do no harm? What are you saying? Postpone the operation until you have more experience. Postponing means signing that baby's death warrant. I will not be the one to do that. But they'll ruin you. Walter, I'm operating tomorrow. Oh, Al. You're rushing this. Because you don't want to admit to those parents that you spoke too soon. myself behind the wheel. Damn, anybody would be nervous. It's not that. I was just thinking about a remark you made. You said I used to be wild, not just ambitious. But I wonder if my ambition hasn't driven me wild. wanted to wish good luck to everyone. Thank you, Vivian. Thanks, Vivian. We're gonna block that baby's pulmonary artery for 30 minutes. Well, as long as her blood pressure doesn't go below 60, I think she should be fine. I don't think she can survive much lower than that. Isn't that right, Dr. Harmel? Not below 60, that's right, Doctor. Dr. Blaylock, they're ready. Doctor. Dr. Longmark. What is going on? They won't page him. Why not? Something about hospital policy? 
Paige, Vivian, Thomas, immediately. Dr. Boylan, what's wrong? Yes. What's happened? It's all right. I won't tell you again, Paige. We're only allowed to page doctors. God damn it. Vivian Thomas. Paging Vivian Thomas. She wanted it in OR right now. Come on the run. This is Blayla. Thank you, thank you. Jesus. About time. Scrub up. Scrub up. You're coming in with me. Would you find Mr. Thomas something to stand on? What for, Doctor? You're talking me through this. Now, scrub up. What's he doing? What the hell is that? I'll see about this. Should we say a prayer? Forget it. He won't listen to me. Dr. Blaylock, a word? You can resume your duties. These are his duties. Uh, can you see now? Yes, Doctor. Okay, I think we're ready to start. Okay. We're going in. Incising the mediastinal pleura from the main left pulmonary artery. To the apex of the pleural space. I'm dissecting the pulmonary artery. Well back into the mediastinum. It's all right, Vivian. That looks fine. The right angle clamp. I think it's holding. Are you able to deliver the left subclavian artery? I believe so. Blood pressure? 70. Falling. I do not move that light. And now, I'm dividing Careful beyond. <laughs> Clamp it, clamp it. I can't reach it, doctor. I got it. Hemorrhage control. Can you see, doctor? Not really. Nurse. For goodness sake, can't you even see my ears? Search it. Blood pressure 68. Yes, yes, go on. Watch the carotid. Yes, traction on the suture. Okay, now the clamp Vivian made. My clamp? The one just there, right here. Yes. And we're about to connect the shun. Blood pressure 60? No, 59. I know, I'm almost there. Front interrupted. You're good. That's good, Doctor. That's good. Just a little more now. Removing the bulldog clamp. Some bleeding there. I know, I see it too. Suture. Suture. No, no, doctor, the other way. Yes, yes. Good, good, good enough. 
played and controlled. I'm palpating the connection. Will he feel? I can't tell if blood is flowing through the shunt. It's just too small to feel anything. Dr. Blaylock, you have to see this. Evacuate the blood of the chest cavity, Bill. Put in the chest tube. We inflating the blood along with oxygen. Ready for closure. Try without him. <laughs> you did well in there, Vivian. Thank you. You performed an excellent surgery, Doctor. Yes. I think I did. children from all across the country and then there's just one doctor to perform these operations so if you could just go to the administration office they'll be able to accommodate all of you into dr blaylock's schedule as soon as possible right i'm i'm terribly sorry making the first incision effectively why not are you there vivian yes i'm here Thank you for the opportunity to observe Dr. Blaylock. It's an honor, Doctor. Once again, excellent work, gentlemen. Thank you, Helen. Now, may I introduce my colleagues, Dr. Yes. Helen Taussig, Vivian Thomas, Dr. Crawford from yes. Stockholm, and Dr. Oh, Petrovsky oh, from please. Leningrad. Oh, you have given surgeons yeah. around the world great courage with your deeds. Well, uh, coming from such an eminent surgeon as yourself, that is a compliment indeed. It's been a great pleasure to meet you, Dr. Taussig. Oh, thank you. Dr. Thomas. Oh, call me Mr. Thomas or Vivian. You're not a doctor. Oh, no, I just work here with Dr. Blaylock. Can we please have all the doctors who participated in the blue baby operation in this shot? There's a young woman who hitchhiked from Appalachia with her son, and I think his blood levels may be low enough to test. Talk to Dr. Tassik about the schedule in a minute. If you would all turn and face the center, please, like Dr. Longmire. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, focus your attention here, please. Smile, focus here. Hold that. Good. Now, if we could have one of you alone, Dr. Blaylock. Very good, sir. Focus here, if you would. Here you go, doctor. Here. Thank you. Yeah, I 
some nice pictures. Just because you're not in the news doesn't mean you weren't there, Viv. who's rescued untold lives with his work in shock and has gone on to challenge the entire medical establishment to reconsider an age-old taboo in performing the world's first heart surgery. Now, without embarrassing myself, I'd like to introduce a man who has undeniably brought a dash of pink to the cheeks of others. <laughs> Dr. Alfred Blaylock. Thank you. I am indeed honored. While I am grateful for the many gifts that have been given to me in my life, perhaps the greatest gift has been the support of my colleagues over this last year. My good friend, Walter Dandy, the wonderful, brilliant colleagues who assisted me in our operation, Dr. Helen Tausig, Dr. William Longmire, Dr. Denton Cooley, Dr. Merrill Harmel. I believe one group of people could not have accomplished so much in so little time without a strong, unified effort. The spirit of breaking new ground together to further the reach of medicine is one that should be cherished and never allowed to die. something different. What about our work? You've got all those other people you were thanking. What are you talking about? Belvedere Hotel. Belvedere segregated. You were there. Snuck in just like a bellhop. Is that what this is all about? Hobnobbing with the powers that be Vivian, they will never let you into their club. It is naive to think otherwise. Will you stand still? I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about Hopkins. I'm talking about you. Me? What have I ever done except fight in your corner? I have taken you every step of the way with me, and now you want to throw... All that away for what? Is that any way to show your gratitude? I don't know. You tell me, Doctor. Vivian, take pride in the fact you have power in your mind and in your heart. And in my hands. Exactly, in your hands. We made history together. We changed the world. I'm in 
invisible to the world. I don't mind that. I understand that. I thought it was different in here. Thomas, I'm a little confused. Now, you want college credit from Morgan State without actually taking classes? Uh, in certain courses, uh, yes. Uh, I'll take the test. I'll take finals, uh, chemistry, biochemistry, science, physics, uh, so I can get the credit for material I already know. I need to uh, get through college a little more quickly so I, I can get on to med school. And so you actually participated in all this groundbreaking research, Mr. Thomas? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah, well, I'm afraid it just doesn't work like that. And you'll have to start with freshman English, uh, social science, um, maybe... Uh, you, I don't have time for that. Uh, I'm 35 years old. Uh, I, you're saying that I'd have to start at the beginning? Well, yes. Mr. Thomas, I'm afraid that is, in fact, what I'm saying. I thought this institution provided an opportunity for colored people. I, I have a wife, two young daughters, son. I've been working in my field over almost 15 years now. Uh, I'm from Nashville. I came... Particularly antacids. We already have a supplier of antacids. Yes, well, these antacids block against gastroesophageal reflux uh, without any adverse Vivian side Thomas. effects. The fellow with the blue babies. A patient of mine works at the hospital, told me about you. Hopkins is doing well because of what you did for them, and here you are. Well, uh, I don't have anything uh, against the hospital. I'm just working in medicine in a, a different way now. Let's see what other lines you have. Well, yes, we have uh, fluorescent powder here. I keep asking it. Thomas and Thomas. With the building boom, we could clean up. Now he know I can't throw a plank worth of damn. Yeah, well, that's the truth. Yeah, Dad, I just see that mailbox leans that side a little bit. <laughs> I still don't understand why you quit teaching in the first place. Well, I never really liked the classroom that much, Claire. Too many kids. But you fought all those years and you won the case, so. Exactly. And quitting now means you've just wasted a whole lot of time. No, no, I'm not well, I, time. I don't think it's a waste of time. If, if Harold wasn't down there doing what he was doing, there'd still be a lot of colored teachers down there getting cheated. I, I think they're all named school after mm. Yeah. Harold Thomas High. Mm -hmm. Harold Thomas High. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Most of these young teachers, they don't know anything about that strike. They just take their equal paycheck for granted. And Harold, you're full of it. Well, ain't no point of you waiting for the world to thank you, Harold. That bus ain't never gonna come. Amen to that. I'm not waiting, Pop. I'm just looking for something that excites me as much as hammering nails pleases you. Hey, Viv. 
Jack Benny's on. I'll be in in a minute. You okay? I'm fine. Stomach's bother me a little bit, but I'm fine. Don't you take one of them fancy antacid pills you always brag about? It's your brother? I miss him. Mr. Old Harold. He seems a little lost now. I miss you. Still got my mind in that lab. It's not just your mind, Viv. It's your heart, too. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, Claire. I think I've embarrassed myself enough. I can't go back in there, but tail between my legs. It's where you belong, Vivian Thomas. So how you walk back on in there, hmm? That's up to you. Yeah? Vivian. Doctor. Come on. How was your trip to Europe? Well, it was very gratifying. The entire world seems to have stood on its feet for this moment in time. What can I do for you, Vivian? I've made a mistake. And I would like my old position back. Well, how's it going to be any different? I'm still the same self-righteous bastard. It's not about you. It's about the work. I like the work. Thomas, we've got an animal going into shock here. What do we do, sir? Did you try clamping off the lateral part of the agent? Yeah. All right. Hold it right there. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You handled yourself well there, Doctor. You're good. <laughs> There was a message for you, Mr. Thomas. Dr. Blaylock wanted to see you. I'm sorry. Uh, would you tell him I'll see him? Well, he's about to leave for the day. Uh, honey, I have to call you back. Okay. How's your curls? Oh, they're, they're fine. They're, they're doing well. The ears and Morgan steak now. Oh. That must feel good. Yes, yes. How, how are things with you? Well, you know, I've had the unfortunate experience of being put in the hands of surgeons. Hmm. You had something on your mind, Doctor? Yes, Columbia's been dangling an offer to teach, but I wanted to talk to you first. I really would like you to come with me, Vivian. They know about your work. You could write your own ticket. It's hard to imagine being there without you. 
Well, I thank you for thinking of me, Doctor. I think I should stay here. We could do great things there. Wouldn't it be fun to do it one more time? <laughs> one more time. Mm. I like what I'm doing. Teaching, helping people along, working with a young doctor. I like it here at Hopkins. Yeah, I guess you got your own things going on here now. I recognize this man. Sir. Man looks very distinguished up there. Well, thank you. Very much. That was a while ago. Yeah, I'm feeling the years now. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. We all are now. You know, Vivian, they say you haven't really lived unless you have a lot to regret. I regret. I have some regrets. But I think we should remember not what we lost, but what we've done. All the lives we saved, and we did. We saved plenty, didn't we, baby? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. No. Vivian, it's Helen. I'm sorry to tell you that uh, Dr. Blaylock passed away in his sleep last night. We see death every day. It doesn't make it any easier, does it? I'm very sorry. Today we honor someone who never took a course in medical school and still became one of our greatest teachers of medicine. This individual helped change the way we understand how the human heart works forever. And now I'm honored to read. The Board of Regents of this, the Johns Hopkins University, in consideration of an innovative scientist an outstanding teacher and a skilled clinical technician has this day awarded this honorary doctorate to Mr. Vivian Thomas. Congratulations, Dr. Thomas. Thank you, Dr. Towson. I'm not accustomed to being in the limelight so being placed in the position I find myself in now makes me quite humble and a little proud. When I put my hammer and saw down 40 years ago and was offered an opportunity to work with a young surgeon, I had no idea 
that I'd be able to make a mark on an institution as prestigious as this one. I had no idea that I would have any contribution to make to medicine that would merit this type of recognition. I simply say thank you to all of my family and all of my friends who are here and to all of my friends who cannot be here. I thank you very much. This is also a special occasion to mark the unveiling of your likeness, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs>